All right, good evening. Welcome to Lehigh University's NBA Draft Preview. I'm your host, Matt Marcus, from ESPN Radio of the Lehigh Valley, your local home for Lehigh Athletics. I'm here in the new Caruso Wrestling Complex that will be opening up this fall. To my left, head coach of Lehigh, Dr. Brett Reed. Coach, how you doing? Doing great. This is new technology. I'm excited about this. It's new for everybody. We're going to see how this goes. I joined, uh, I don't know if it's via satellite or the magic of the Google Plus Hangout, but uh, Gabe Knutson is with us. He has ninth all-time leading scorer, three-time academic all-Patriot League honoree. He's also a recent co-captain alongside C.J. McCollum. And Adam Figman is a Lehigh graduate, associate editor of Slam Magazine, and former sports editor of the Brown and White Lehigh's student newspaper. Everyone here to talk about C.J. McCollum, now just three days away from the NBA draft. Gentlemen, everybody on board, uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll get started. Uh, Coach, we'll get started with you since uh, you're here with me. I understand there's a, an interesting story about your recruitment uh, of C.J. McCollum, something about ditching a rental car in order to see him. Well, there was a lot of stories. First of all, we got a chance to see C.J. play, and here's this skinny, spindly guy. We're quite sure that physically he had the stature to play college basketball. A lot of people couldn't make up their mind. But we saw some talent in it. And then you know, going out to actually visit him at his home, there was a bad thunderstorm. And uh, they were without power. So we actually had like a candlelight meeting at his home, which was kind of neat. And told him a little bit more of the story of Lehigh. It continued to go well. And you know, fortunately, he cultivated into a relationship that was pretty strong. I'm trying to remember about the lost rental car. Uh, sometimes those, those uh, recruiting visits kind of run together. But they were... It was a good visit, and uh, you know, with a lot of what we ended up seeing with him, even in every step of the way, we were sure that I that he could play. And I probably make the understatement of my college coaching career in saying that I really thought he could help our program. Needless to say, did I think he would be an NBA lottery pick? Probably not. Yeah, more on that in a little bit, Gabe. Uh, let's go over to you and talk about your first impression. When you met C.J. McCollum, coach talked about his stature. What were your first thoughts? Yeah, I still remember in, in lower sense uh, him getting out of the car with his uh, mom and dad. Uh, he was wearing all his Glen Oak basketball gear. And, uh, yeah, the, the biggest memory I have is him being extremely skinny. Um, I know he's, he's since put on a lot of weight. But, um, yeah, I, I know his uh, determination to be in the gym uh, showed up on day one um, where we were in the gym. So, uh yeah, it's, uh, it's no surprise uh, to me that he's, he's where he is today. Now, your freshman year, you guys were thrust into the team, but it was a, a team that had a lot of senior leadership. What was that like? How did the seniors respond to you, and how do you feel you guys did as freshmen uh, going, obviously, on a, a very good team? Yeah, I think we both uh, had a unique opportunity to play freshman year, uh, and start freshman year, and uh, I think the, the seniors at the time, uh, you know, Zaire, Marquise, Dave and Shame has really made it easy on us. Um, you know, I, I know it couldn't have been easy having CJ come in and score 20 a game, but you know, they, they knew that it was going to help us win, and uh, they, they really did a good job of uh, helping us grow as players and uh, as people. And uh, you know, in the end, I, I think it really worked out. Adam, let's bring you on here, uh, covering the team that freshman year. I believe it would have been your senior year. Your thoughts then to now, uh, what you thought about. CJ as a freshman, and then we'll ask you to translate that to what you saw his four years. Well, I wasn't in a capacity on, on the brown and white at that point, but um, you know, I was paying attention to the team, of course. I, you know, I think everyone was kind of intrigued that the kid could clearly score from anywhere on the court. Um, strong player. I don't think anyone expected. Well, I didn't at least expect him to develop in the way that he did. But um, yeah, just I think he immediately impressed. He clearly could. Could, uh, could lead the team in, in a variety of ways. Uh, strong score. You know, I think that's as far as this, I thought. I just thought, oh, this kid was a, a good Patriot League basketball player, someone who could put the ball in the hoop from anywhere. And that was as far as it went. I didn't really expect it to develop into what it's become at all. Do you have an idea where he's projected to be chosen in the draft in a couple days? Yeah, I mean, I've heard anywhere from 6th and 7th down to 11th or 12th, kind of in that pocket. Um, the Pistons at eight, I believe. Uh, the Kings at seven, maybe. The T Wolves are either nine or ten. I think if he 
I don't know if it, it's considered slipping because it's still a lottery, but if you fell to 11 or 12, I don't think any of those teams would pass up um, the chance to, to pick up a talent like that. Maybe the Blazers. You know, it's that that's kind of where his pocket has been so far. Can you give us a short scouting report, uh, perhaps uh, what NBA teams would be excited about in getting him? Sure. I, I think that, uh, well, clearly his, his scoring ability is top-notch. That, that goes without saying. I think there's a number of, you know, in basketball it seems like everybody's always thinking, okay, who's the player that he resembles? What's he like? Um, clearly there's the Damian Lillard comparison. Came from a small school, broke out as a rookie after everyone said he didn't have as much competition as he needed to. As a, you know, as a collegiate, I think he clearly he would have that wrong. Steph Curry, uh, similar story, guard, you can score from anywhere on the court. Um, and then, you, you know, you have guys who, who kind of play combo, Jason Terry types, um, Jamal Crawford, guys like that, guys who are just strong scorers. Um, I think that there's still the question of, obviously, everyone wants to know, is he going to be a point guard, a shooting guard? People like to kind of group draft prospects in those little boxes and usually you know you see guys go into the league and just kind of burst out of those so I don't think that's as important as some people make it out to be but uh, yeah I think those are the kind of the, the kind of uh, that's what people are expecting you know a strong scoring point guard someone like a Damian Lillard or a Steph Curry or someone in that vein. Coach we got the journalistic breakdown there as a coach we hear about intangibles what can you give that you're not really going to get in a scouting report you know what, when you start thinking about CJ and bringing him into an organization and helping to build a culture of a program, his character is first and foremost. Because when you watch him play, you see how smooth he scores, you can see his playmaking ability, but when he has all those intangibles that brings other people, brings out the best in other people in the locker room, in practice, even almost as a Pied Piper bringing people into the gym, those are the things that make an organization much stronger. And then you get, along with that, all those variables that you see out on the floor from his playmaking skills, from his ability to score, and even his defensive anticipation, all those things are really strong. I would have to imagine this is new for you as a coach. What is the uh, last couple of weeks, the last couple of years? What has the process been like on your side of things with this? Well, we've been very fortunate to have a talent like CJ in our program. Even, you know, Dave Knutson being a very talented player, but the focus on CJ with what he's been able to do has been incredible. And it's really helped our program get stronger and stronger with the leadership that we had when he first came in to the point that we're at now with the program because of his influence and the influence of others. But, you know, having gone through that process, even that early entry process where we were assessing should he go out at the end of last year when his market value is extremely high, there's the emotional benefit of a great win, a great performance against Duke in the NCAA tournament. And then watching him come to the realization that he wanted to come back to get his degree, to finish out his career with his teammates that he really cared about. It's been an enjoyable process, a time-consuming process, because one of the major things that I can do is provide the information to CJ during the early entry process. And now, just tell everybody the story of who he is. Did they get a clear picture and get to know him a little bit better? Was there any worry that last year would have been it for him? You know what? I honestly believe he would have been a first-round draft pick last year. I felt very confident about that through the information that I was able to gather. And with that type of potential comes a, a little bit of a the unknown of whether or not he should capitalize at that point. But well, CJ was pretty firm the whole way through, stating that he really wanted to come back. And from a coach's perspective, I told him, you can come back and get your degree later. You've done great things for this university. If this is where you're supposed to go, then go right ahead. But he was pretty steadfast. You know, the relationship that he has with his family, the importance that they've always put on education. And then I really think he had some teammates that he really loved, and he felt like we were able to accomplish a whole lot more together. Let's go back to one of those uh, teammates in, in Gabe Knutson. Gabe, did you have any conversations with CJ that time last year uh, about the academic side and the importance of getting that degree uh, from Lehigh University? Yeah, I think that was one of the main reasons. Uh, you know, obviously the the basketball and everything, but you know, he really does put an uh, importance on academics. Um, he's been in the library with me till uh, the wee hours of the morning. Um, you know, just like all Lehigh students, you know, he cares about it and. I think you can even see through his interviews and obviously through through my interactions with him, um, you know that he, he wants to be a journalist and he wants to, 
you know, continue on covering basketball when, when he's done with his playing days. Um, and that's usually something you don't talk about when you're you're just about to get picked in three days. But I know that when he's uh, when he's out of here, uh, out of out of playing, he wants to to carry on and continue with uh, the education that, that he was given. And we can also point out that uh, CJ was involved with the latest edition of Sports Illustrated, uh, being I guess published uh, in the the back pages of that most recently. And uh, he was. I don't want to say supposed to be involved with this today. We were hoping to get him, um, but with his schedule, uh, a second round of interviews with the Sacramento Kings, CJ was unable to come uh, join us today. Uh, but let's go back to Adam. Uh, you talked about the comparisons of current NBA players. Do you have any comparisons of some other guys that would be in the draft with? Um, a little bit. I mean, they're all very different. You know, you have uh, Michael Carter Williams, who's a point guard, who's kind of has, you know, a bigger guy. Like six six or so, six five, who is a pass first type point guard, which you know CJ clearly isn't, which is fine. Um, Trey Burke is, is kind of a lot of people are comparing him to that Chris Paul type, where he's you know strong defender, um, can score, but can pass, kind of you know all over the place. Um, yeah, there, I mean there are a couple of guys, there are a couple of shooters, um, but I don't think there's anyone in the exact vein. You know CJ, for him, you know in a good way for him. He kind of, what he has going for him is that he's a really strong scorer. Um, a team in the top 10, 12 knows what they're going to get. You know, strong basketball IQ. I don't think there's anyone in that top group that, that exactly resembles this game by any means. How do you see him matching up against defenses of the NBA and the, the speed and the quickness? Uh, it's one thing talking about his scoring compared to other scorers, but his scoring against the defenses in the NBA. Yeah, I mean the level of competition is way different. You know that goes without saying. Um, I, I would again point to the, the Damian Lillard comparison on that one. You just see how everyone questioned the same thing with Dame: what was going to happen when he was playing against you know NBA players with bigger bodies, much more athleticism. You know, it goes without saying that he was fine as the Rookie of the Year. But um, yeah, I mean it, it'll be different. It'll, it'll it'll take some adjustments if he's you know a little slow out of the gate. It wouldn't shock me, and I wouldn't panic by any means. I think that's just you know, that's just an NBA adjustment. That's what happens. But um, I think that he can that he can adjust, and that it'll be different. But I think it, he has a natural a natural score. He has an ability to put the ball in the hoop, even when he was playing against. You know, when Lehigh did go into the tournament and played against these top teams, these top defenders, he didn't have a problem scoring for the most part. You know, he's a strong scorer, and that's kind of that he just has a knack for for scoring, and you know, you can't really teach that. That that should transcend. You know, an, an improvement in the athleticism that surrounds him. Coach, a lot of talk about the game against Duke. You mentioned it. Adam mentions the uh, the national recognition. Maybe a couple of years ago, if you had a player drafted in the NBA, they would have said with the whatever pick, C.J. McCollum from Lehigh, there would have been a lot of what, where. But I think because of it, the national recognition over the last couple of years, the program has been elevated. What has that done for the program and specifically the game against Duke? What did that do to bring us to the point now where when – David Stern says, C.J. McCollum, Lehigh University, no one's going to ask where that is. No, but it's been a, a unique, almost metamorphosis of our program where it's gotten stronger collectively due to the individual contributions of so many strong players prior to C.J. And then C.J., along with his teammates, really taking it up to another level where there's national prominence. When we had the opportunity to participate in the NCAA tournament, we were the unknown. We, nobody was picking us against a favorite Duke team, but on that particular night, and part of the joy and the, the luster of March Madness, we were able to show the national audience of over 8 million people who were watching, really who Lehigh was all about. And then when you start hearing the you know, stories of our players and you start finding out a little bit more about our school, it becomes really apparent that it's kind of the best balance of the academics and the basketball. And since we've had a lot of success, and well, CJ's personal success and our team success has continued to elevate our program on a national stage, where there's been a great deal of interest in a really warm environment for other basketball prospects that are interested in getting a top-flight education and having the chance to play very competitive basketball. And I think CJ's proof that if those are your dreams, you can get there from here. I would like to point out that three days prior to that, I had you on our radio show. And I asked you, what do you want Coach K to say to you after you beat them? So it wasn't a surprise to me. Just point that out. There you go. 
Gabe, uh, talk about that moment. It was not your first NCAA tournament appearance, but uh, the huge win against Duke, the Euphoria afterwards. Talk about that. Oh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, I was obviously uh, fortunate enough to be able to play, I think it was a 2010 tournament uh, against Kansas, and I think that was a, obviously a very new, new experience. You know, none of us have been there, um, and it was our goal. And I think we were all settled down um, when it came tournament time uh, against Duke there, and obviously we, we came together and, and made something special. Um, it, it was a fun time. It was a fun time for the university. It was a, a fun time for... You know, the guys are our teammates, and uh, yeah, it was a blast, a, a dream come true. Let's fast forward a couple of years. Uh, an unfortunate time. What was the moment like and the attitude in the locker room after the VCU game, uh, or at least uh, in the, the practice room when you found out that it was a good chance that CJ was not going to be there for the foreseeable, foreseeable future? It turned out to be the rest of the season. But you guys still bound together for the 21 season, a great campaign. Talk about the moment that you, you found out you'd have to do it without him on the floor at least, but also the attitude of that team sticking together. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, it was tough. Uh, I remember being in the locker room. Um, you know, I, I wasn't even aware right when he went out that he was hurt. Uh, I thought it could have been an ankle, a uh, sprained ankle, something like that. Um, but, yeah, when, when you could hear him, uh, you know, his pain in the locker room, um, it was tough. It was tough for everybody, but – um, we knew we weren't, uh, you know, a one-man team. Um, obviously, uh, we think he would have helped us a lot and could have taken that uh, championship from Bucknell there. But um, we, we were tough guys. I think uh, it showed the, the character of the rest of the guys in the locker room. Uh, we knew we could pull together and, you know, have a good season. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to, you know, come back and get the championship. But, you know, all, all things considered, I think we, uh, you know, had a had a pretty strong season, 20, 20, 20, 21 wins. And, you uh, it was outstanding. Coach, uh, CJ mentioned over the, the last couple of weeks and since his injury, uh, more time than ever breaking down film. Uh, we will talk to him, talk to other players since then and hear from the players. Um, and I was specific when I asked the question of Gabe that he was no longer with them on the floor. Very evident he was still with them in the locker room uh, and on the bench. Talk about his development almost as a, as a player coach, if you will. I don't want to put those words in your mouth, but uh, what he was able to do and bring to the team even after the injury. You know what, it's interesting. We would have liked to have him utilize him on the floor, and naturally that would have made a huge difference for our season, although it was a successful season. But the number one focus is on making sure that PJ was healthy and he was still preparing for the next stage, whether the next stage was a return to our team towards the end of the year, the next stage was a return to playing basketball at a higher level. CJ is a type of player, it's, it's, it's amazing. He wanted the ball in his hands all the time. And even when he couldn't technically walk or put any pressure on his, on his foot, he's sitting in a chair shooting a basketball. He's you know, dribbling a basketball to the side. And his presence with his teammates, I think, was apparent the whole way through. I think there was a lot of mutual respect built up through the process of his career. And he wanted to do everything that he could in order to continue to support them. And I think Gabe could probably attest that there were a lot of individual and private conversations that CJ would always kind of take upon himself to either motivate or redirect his teammates, get them focused towards the ultimate greater goal, and that was to build a successful season. And, um, you know, fortunately for him, just as indicated by him wanting the ball in his hands, even when he wasn't healthy enough to play, he was studying film. He was doing all those things. And when you start to think about the mental progress of somebody, not only do you think about their IQ and how they grow as a player, but it also becomes pretty evident when you start to think about his maturity and the amount of growth that it would take for him personally to deal with a loss of something that he really cares about, that's game of basketball. He sacrificed so much to come back for a senior year, yet he has a devastating injury that ends up being uh, season-ending and yet his attitude through the entire process was absolutely phenomenal. And he was just continually looking for the next goal and the next opportunity to remove himself. Okay, was there anything you wanted to add to that or at least uh, agree with? Yeah, I think it was a tough time uh, for him. Obviously, he wanted to be on the, the court. Um, he wanted to be with us. He wanted to be practicing. Um, but, yeah, he showed up in other ways. Uh, he took care of his body. Um, 
you know, first and foremost, that's what he needed to do. He needed to get his foot better and, and did a lot of uh, weightlifting, but he took care of us too. Um, I know he would talk to Holden and myself after games, after practice. Um, he was still there with us. And, uh, you know, it meant a lot um, because, you know, we were on the court and he wasn't, uh, so we knew it was a tough situation. But um, I think we all made the best of it. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be joined by uh, Zaire Carrington, champion uh, in his own right, back on that 2010 team uh, with you, Gabe. Uh, some technical difficulties uh, maybe kept us uh, apart, but I was going to ask him about a road trip uh, to the Xavier game after you guys had beaten Duke. Uh, just talk about the camaraderie that you saw uh, with former teammates, former players, and talk about the, the Lehigh family that even though they're no longer on the floor, they're, uh, they're still with you just like we, we would assume that you'll still be with the team next year, I'm young. Oh, absolutely. Um, I could even speak to just, uh, you know, I've been in New York City the past two weeks, and I've seen, uh, spent about a week with Rob Kiefer when I was getting into my uh, my place where I am now. Um, I've seen Zaire a few times. Um, another Lehigh uh, basketball guy, guy, Adam Heinzik, has helped me out to get, um, you know, in the gym. And uh, it just it just shows the, the Lehigh family. Uh, the Lehigh basketball team really sticks together. Um, you know, I, I couldn't tell you how many text messages I had after that game and um, how good it felt to see uh, my friends, my former teammates, uh, you know, former basketball guys, uh, even at games, um, you know, the next year. Uh, it was really outstanding, and it just shows how, how close we are and uh, how strong of a family that Lehigh basketball team is. Adam, I want to ask you about last year, uh, if you can fill us in. Uh, are you familiar with where CJ may have been in the draft, or at least was projected to be, had he not pulled himself out? Yeah, I, I couldn't give you an exact figure, but I want to say it was in the teens, um, low double digits to, you know, teens, 20s. Um, he was looked at as a, someone that would probably go in the first round, but I think there was still some concern that he could fall into second, maybe. Um, you know, he's, he wasn't the established lottery pick that he is now, that, that much I know. Well, it's kind of a, a two-part question because from that point, April, May, give or take, up until the injury in December, he went from that place where, he's, where you mentioned, maybe late teens, early 20s. Coach, I'll get your opinion on this as well. He went from there to, I was seeing projections, 7 to 10. December and January when he was injured. So if you can talk about just the growth, I'm sure it's more than just well, a lot of those guys were drafted, so he slid right up. But in terms of the scouts' take and the projections to go from from that point last year, just basically with a non-conference schedule and uh, getting to the point where he was in the lottery or projected to be so, and then even despite an injury, he's kind of back there when the thought was maybe he would have fallen. Adam, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think that what you mentioned, where um, a, a few of the guys were, take, were taken last year, and uh, a couple of the guys, it, you know, it, it's it's seen as a quote-unquote weak draft, which isn't, you know, I think that's the kind of thing that history will probably prove that wrong, or at least, you know, there's a good chance that that won't work out as, in the way that some people expect. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's that. There's just, I think the fact that he, he did show what he has in the beginning of the year, that was important. You know, people saw that, that the Duke... The outburst of scoring against Duke was not some fluke, not some random game. He, um, he, you know, he, he proved his ability in the beginning of the year, and then he went down. And, and you know, he's he's done a good job of kind of explaining how you know he he know he, he knew he needed to get stronger over the course of the year, and, and whether or not he's on the court, he could have still done that and still continued that up. And um, then the, then the whole workout process. I mean, over the past few weeks, that that's kind of designed to filter out um, someone who would still be dealing with a, with a bad injury. That was still nagging their play. So I think if if it was a problem now, then teams would have been able to figure that out, and I think that they've probably been able to see that it's not a problem anymore. And so his draft stock just kind of catapulted right back up, and even further than it would have been. Coach, I will get your thoughts on that. You'd probably I don't know how much you followed it during the season. It's kind of my job to do so. So every time there was a projection, I was kind of seeing where he was, and like I said, you were kind of seeing him 7 to 10, give or take. Then he gets injured, and the question is, does he fall out of the first round? How bad is the injury? No one knew, of course, at the time. Was there a fear of maybe he should have he should have stayed in the draft last year because of the injury? 
one of the biggest things that was emotionally charged with his injury was the identification that, you know, he had sacrificed to come back. And as much as I care about CJ and as great of an individual as he is, the goal was for him to maximize that year without actually having a hinder it. Unfortunately, what the general audience might not realize is during the summer, after our last season, after his junior year, he had a very productive summer. He went to the Chris Paul camp, went to the Kevin Durant camp, performed well, and ended up going to the LeBron James camp. And in each of those situations against some pretty high-level competition, he performed well, which only helped him continue to solidify the fact that he was a very legit player. Then he goes through the early part of our season. He shoots the ball at a very high rate. He's very efficient with his game. Everyone can see that it continues to carry over. Obviously, you deal with an injury, and the fact that injuries can hurt some stock um, is something that's real. But we've seen other players who perhaps had an injury, a recoverable injury, people pass on them, and then they scratch their head wondering why they ever will do that. And I think because CJ has healed so well, because people realize that that was not a career-threatening injury, especially with the way that we handled it, trying to make sure that we were very conservative so we could heal properly, make sure that everything was in place for the next step of his career. You know, it, it relieves a lot of that doubt where now he's got a chance to show that he's healthy. And, you know, if anybody is using that as a barometer to potentially reduce his draft stock, or somebody who ultimately will come through, uh, you know, according to records and is healthy, that's probably a bad business decision as well. We're just about out of time here. We want to have uh, some final thoughts. Uh, Adam, we'll start with you. You can take this however you want, whether it's a, a prediction or projection. And final thoughts on the evening. And uh, well, one final thing I'd like to get from everybody. Uh, where will you be watching this? Will you be in-house uh, in Brooklyn uh, watching it uh, at the draft? Or where will you be uh, taking it all in on Thursday night? Um, I'll be at Barclays Center in the press section um, watching it unfold. I guess as a, as a final thought, I you know, Best of luck to CJ. I, I think he has an extremely bright future ahead of him. I guess that, that goes without saying at this point. But, um, yeah, I mean, thanks a lot for having me. Appreciate it. We appreciate, again, uh, Associate Editor of Slam Magazine, uh, Adam Figman. And uh, Gabe Knudsen, uh, we should also point out, again, the two-time champion and, again, the, the ninth leading scorer uh, in Lehigh history. Uh, not to be outdone, of course. I don't want to shortchange Gabe. But, Gabe, your, your final thoughts. And, uh, and if you'll be in house uh, as well on Thursday. Yeah, I'll, I'll gladly be outdone by CJ there. But yeah, I'll, I'll also be in attendance. I'm going with uh, my other roommate, Jordan Turner. Uh, we're both going to be going down. Uh, we will not be in the press section. Uh, I think we'll be in the balcony. But um, hopefully, we'll be able to see there, uh, CJ there. Coach, you uh, with some final thoughts? Absolutely. You know, I, I will be in attendance. Fortunately, CJ was kind enough to an extended invitation for me to be able to join him and select members of his family. I know he's going to have a great contingency there. He's got his mother, his father, his brother, who was coming back early from Greece in order to take part in it, who's been so instrumental in his life. I believe his grandmother will be there. He'll have aunts in attendance. Oh, so many people that care so much about him. And it's going to be really neat to be able to see almost a validation of what's been a lifelong dream for him. And to have that chance, for him to walk across the stage, be selected by a team, is something that I think every young basketball player kind of dreams about. And for us to be able to see CJ capture that moment, hold on to it, and make the most of it, which I'm sure he will, is really going to be special. So I know that there'll be a lot of um, tears and hugs and all that type of stuff at his table as a validation of all his hard work. And uh, I'm just happy to kind of be there to join him on that evening, and I've been really pleased to be able to join him over the course of his career. He's been a wonderful young man. He's represented this university extremely well. And for all the Lehigh alums that are out there that have a connection to our basketball program, I think this is a guy that you can be proud of. This is a guy that represents all the amounts of hard work that most of our students have put in. As Gabe Knudsen mentioned, you know, in the library late at night, working hard. He's worked hard to prepare his mind. He's worked hard to prepare his body. He's got tremendous character that uh, will continue to carry him forward. And because of all those attributes, I think he'll be well prepared for the next step in the NBA as well.
Well, by random luck, I had the fortune of being on the call for his first ever game on a rainy November day in Richmond. And I remember at the shoot around, you're, you and I are talking, and we got this freshman. I don't know how great he's going to be. I, maybe you don't even say that. You didn't, you didn't want to project anything. You probably knew how good he was going to be. But you said, keep an eye on him. And uh, very proud to say I had the smallest of small, small parts. And uh, and I'm proud of this tonight. So You know what? One, right. one other thing with that. CJ mentioned this at the senior banquet, and Gabe will remember it. CJ noted that Gabe was able to start at the beginning of his college career, yet he had to come off the bench <laughs> in the beginning. And yeah, was... his way. We were actually trying to get him to improve his defense a little bit. <laughs> so, um, you know, Gabe does have one over on him. I know, Gabe, you're number nine on the scoring list. Yeah. You do have one over on him right now, don't you? Yeah. I... Yeah, I was going to say that that freshman, that was me you were talking about, right? I had four points in that Richmond game. <laughs> you know what? He mentioned you too. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that game well. I remember the game well. You said the freshman class is probably. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And, and yeah. Olden too. Don't forget yeah, that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Don't forget about him. That's a lot well, of points graduating there, Coach. Oh, I'm, I'm well aware. I'm well aware. Yeah. No, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. Absolutely, Gabe. Thanks for your time, Adam, oh. Coach, uh, everybody who's uh, been watching. Really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, kind of reminiscing, and we're all looking forward to uh, Thursday night. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks for having me. Me too, man. Wrap it up, I'll just give uh, a couple more points of, of interest. Yeah, the draft is Thursday. It's uh, July 27th at 7 p.m. at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. You can watch the draft live on ESPN or the uh, watchespn.com. Tickets are available for the draft. You can sit up in the balcony with Gabe. $20, $35 uh, on Ticketmaster. You can check lehigh.edu and lehighsports.com for more of those details. If you're into Twitter, you can follow at lehighu, the letter U, at lehighmbb, or at lehighsports. And if you do tweet, use the hashtag draftcj for any photos or tweets. Try to get that trending. Uh, the Hangout also, if you caught it late and you didn't see the beginning, we stored on Lehigh University YouTube channel, Lehigh U Official in the letter. Lehigh U Official. You can watch that on demand. Again, thanks to all the panelists. Thanks to everybody who uh, watched. Coach, for Adam, for Gabe, even Zaire. Sorry we couldn't make it if you are watching. We do appreciate the trying. I'm Matt Marcus. Thanks for watching.